Render Wars is back! And if you're thinking to yourself, mate, I've completely forgot you were even doing Render Wars, or if you're new here and you didn't even see one of the first shows, then uh, I don't blame you, mate, because it's been several months since the last one, but there's a good reason for that. So I'm going to go over a few details and reasons why and some changes to the show. The reason why it's taken so long for the next episode to come around is because it was taking a good few days to put together each episode. The resulting views on YouTube just weren't worth the time that it was taking. So I'm having to make a few adjustments, in other words, regressing in the quality. So the quality's taken a nosedive, mate. Uh, we're going backwards around here, which isn't uh, just something that I like to do, but it has to be done in order to get the show finished. We've got a 3D mouse to give away, and damn it, I'm not going to give it away. Uh, another bit of feedback that I got was that some of the renders weren't the best, they were just okay, and that was me trying to be inclusive. I was getting a lot of entrance through, and I wanted to include as many people as possible, but that resulted in some just average images which doesn't make for a great show it is render wars after all it's about showing the best of the best renders that i get sent through it's not engineering wars as, as good of a piece of engineering as you might have done and you've just done a default render in inventor that's not going to make it onto the show unfortunately so being more brutal and savage with who gets included to try and make the show a little bit more appealing and true to its actual purpose yeah and another thing i brought this on myself i said in the original announcement Please give me a story or some kind of anecdote about how the render came about, what you did, a story behind it. Uh, no, don't do that. That resulted in just pages and pages and pages of emails coming through and I can't weave that into the show. That was, again, taking a lot of time to try and read through that, absorb it and remember to say it as I'm going through the images and I can't do that. Uh, as long as the renders are yours, uh, let me know what they were done in and that's about enough for me, to be honest. Like, that's, that's enough information. But with that being said, mate, Jeffrey Mole was the winner of episode four. Congratulations to Jeffrey. He's through to the final, so let's begin with episode five wow okay so i'm gonna go through these really quickly because i've just already done that and it was uh, about 30 minutes long which is unacceptably lengthy so uh, let's just bang through all these renders really quickly and not dwell on them too much so starting with doffer first entrant into render wars episode five with a uh, render of th this is a photo of what he's actually modeled this is the destroyed and they need to be destroyed tomahawk which is some character i assume from a franchise universe that i'm not familiar with but i uh, appreciate the render wars background there mate so yeah he's modeled up the and they need to be destroyed tomahawk in inventor and the images are really nice the textures are crisp and pinpoint sharp difficult to get textures tiled in inventor without there being like a visible seam between them nice background blur on that and he's died he's bless him destroyed tomahawk such a savage brutal name but he's just so cute and lovable with his 80s ford fiesta headlight torch on his shoulder <laughs> bless him and here he is stood in a room on his own like he's been called out to the wrong address going hmm? anybody order a robot to have something to destroy <laughs> he stood there on his own with his hooves for feet bless him uh, good, good render though doffer i'm um, enjoying him there's his tinder profile of his peaches backside for the ladies hey, hey, aafx <laughs> and those butt cheeks for them uh yeah it's it's it, good i'm i'm enjoying these doffer man they're really good renders of the destroyed tomahawk look at his face bless him how could you be scared of that face when he turns up to destroy you with his exhaust for eyes and his little toothless frog grin <laughs> hey buddy we need a robot for this and to be destroyed oh that hurt uh, yeah it's, uh, it's a really good render there he is in his original form in uh, wireframe mode and inventor colored in Thank you very much, Doffer, for entering into Render Wars. And up next is James Lenane, who sent in over 50 renders. Cheers for that, James. I had to sift these down. Quite a few of them were car renders. Now, I am trying to be myself a car rendering connoisseur, so I'm going to critique some of them, uh, just minimally, obviously, for time. But uh, this is some sort of old gun. I think done in key shots. It says Colt over the top. Uh, I'm not familiar with guns. I'm from the UK. We don't have an amendment that allows us to legally protect ourselves with assault and sniper rifles but uh yeah it's it's a it's a good render the a white background possibly would have been a bit better to make it pop out but uh there's the smoke coming out of the barrel is a nice effect possibly post-processing but uh yeah the metal texture quality and the grip quality is uh it's just really good bb8 looking sharp as a dart dapper awesome background reflections textures the rust the bump maps across the board mate that is lovely loving that good airplane shot there with lens flare i don't know whether the propeller is a keyframe animation with motion blur or whether that was done in post but uh the back plate's lovely man like the exposure on the clouds and the lens flare it's just a beautiful shot and uh, the first of your car shots 
one running theme across all of your car shots, and I'll show you what I mean, is uh, you're missing tire sidewall markings on all of your cars, which makes a massive difference. It just takes it up to the next level, but I think that's a six series Grand Coupe. The, the interior light effect going on there is really good. It's just, yeah, good. I love a good BMW made. You drop BMW into any rendering package, just hit go and it looks awesome. Buick there with a good back plate, nice sort of tarmac effect on the on the back plate, nice and sharp, good shadows, orientated properly so it's all angled nicely. The detail on the front bumper is lovely. One thing I try to do as well when I've got like, you see these overhead power cables, that's like a standout feature in the back plate. I would try and reflect those by modeling something in the rendering package to reflect on the model. Even if you wouldn't see it in real life, it just gives it that extra bit of realism. But the detail in that is beautiful, mate. I love that. Nice caterpillar model here. I'm just going to turn the camera off for a second so you can see the like the, the muck and the dirt going up on the, the bucket. It's just a, that attention to detail. I appreciate that. And the time and effort that's gone into the graffiti on the wall is it's just that is amazing, mate. I absolutely love it. I don't know. This must is this like a Lego? I don't know if it's like a Lego caterpillar or something, but I'm just think, looking at these sort of circular spots on the. I can't see anything else that's Lego-ish. Probably not. Never mind. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it is a toy model or not. It's just the floor planks, the way they're scaled, makes the model look quite small. But I, I don't know. Either way, as a render, absolutely beautiful, mate. Well done. You cannot, you, you cannot go wrong with a black and white background in a red Ferrari. Just sold. Winner all day long, mate. As a beautiful as a four five eight Italia. Yeah, missing tire wall markings again and grooves and holes on the brake disc. But apart from that, mate, that is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. That's as key shot of a render as key shot gets. The key shot, key shot is just amazing for metal textures. So you can see like the grooves and the bump in the metal and like the you see the scratch there. As that's attention to detail is phenomenal. Uh, nice yellow glow on the metal with a couple of iPhones, uh, really good, like that. Uh, McLaren, yeah, missing tire, tire sidewall markings uh, and center caps on the wheels, but apart from that, the detail in that model and the textures and the plastic and the lights, it's just amazing, mate, well done. And that, that is the money shot. I left this one intentionally to last because I'm all over this, mate. I have no idea what the hell is going on here with this light, but I need that in my life. I need to know how that was done. It looks like the car sort of mid-drift it's like in a drift, and that's like a, a reflection of a street lamp with motion blur uh, trailing off. It's just beautiful, mate. And the flake in the, the paint, whether that's noise or actual metallic flake, I don't know. But it looks amazing. Good selection of renders. Well done, James. Thank you very much for entering into Render Wars. Uh, next up, we have Martin Boudet, who's only sent in a few renders, and I've picked three of them out. Uh, this one here, I don't know what it is, but it looks like a, an industrial cake mixer. <laughs> Could have a whisk on the end of that, mixing up a good hearty industrial sized cake but um the reason i picked this one out is that it's like it's not really an impressive looking product but just the render itself is beautiful like the background blur is lovely and the lighting and the texture quality on the vice itself and on the uh, the motor is is phenomenal like the, the highlight here the detail of the grill there on the motor is amazing the rust on the on the vice handle awesome and then he's got this render of a tram. Now this isn't like photorealistic, stand out, smack you in the face, aren't I amazing good? But um, there's a nice story behind this one is that uh, Martin modeled the the tram and then the tram company actually asked him for his model and used it for like their own internal stuff. Yeah, it's great. It's all done in Inventor, which is even more impressive. I think the background could have been done with being less yellow, less, less saturated, just to separate the model from the background a bit more. Apart from that, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great render. And then this one here, when, when I looked at this for the first time, I was like, why is he scanned in and sent me a photo of his granddad's first ever car? What's this got to do with Render Wars? And then I read his email and he's like, no, this is a render. This is actually an Inventor model rendered in Inventor. I'm like, what? No. No, and then the closer you look at it, you like you start to see like the bulge on the bonnet. That's Inventor Freeform all day long. That's Inventor Freeform giving him a hard time going. You ain't you ain't flexing me down any more than I already am, mate. That's it. I'm staying here. And then the bulbous roof. He even modelled up the uh, the water droplets on the headlights. That, mate. The, I, I'm all for. I absolutely promote and encourage post processing for pictures on Render Wars because it just makes a hell of a difference. 
and that is incredible for an inventor render mate well done on that thank you very much martin for entering into render wars and next up we have sean who has a website where he sells uh, posters of classic porsches that have been rendered in i think bread i think they, they look like bread uh this is a, a 944 I can't critique this much at all, really. This is uh, absolutely amazing. The, mo the quality of the model and the textures are just flawless, really. The lights in the front are a little bit suspect, but it's an old Porsche, so I've, I don't really have anything to compare it with. Tire sidewall markings are intact. The only thing I would say, the only two things that really stand out, which I would critique, are like the, the windscreen could do with having the reflectivity increased a little bit. You can see how reflective the bonnet is, reflecting like the HDRI background. There should really be something on the front windscreen, but even if there wasn't, the way it's angled, I probably would have added it anyway. But aside from that, uh, the contrast, a little bit washed out. That might be the effect he's going for. It is a classic picture after all. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The HDRI is well positioned, uh, well structured. It's difficult to get an HDRI to like be at the right angle to the car and so that the floor is lined up with the car's wheels. It just looks beautiful, well done. Sean, that's a, it's a solid render. And this one here as well, the res I pinched this one off his website. The resolution's quite low as a result of that. I'd, I'd love to have had that like really zoomed in, but that is phenomenal. Lovely old black classic 911. Uh, the detail on the tire tread there is just, just that's what makes the difference. The bumper here, this sort of plastic bumper guard, rear Porsche emblem, the old classic Porsche back end. It's just, what a, what a render mate, that is amazing, love that. And this is a modern 911 GT3 RS, I think. Apart from it missing tyre sidewall markings, or if they're there, they're very subtle. Uh, I'm not seeing them on either of my monitors. The treads there, it's just the, marking, it don't, the markings don't stand out. But apart from that, absolutely fantastic. I love the colour on that. And the background, that HDRI, I need that in my life. Or if, if that's a backplate, I need that backplate, it's beautiful. Uh, the colour of the car is just gorgeous. Awesome render. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, check out his website if you want to go and uh, have a look at the posters that he's got. I'll link that in the description down below. Thank you very much, Sean, for entering into Render Wars. And last but certainly not least, we've got Steve Griffiths with uh, with a handful of renders that I've sifted through again. And this one, this was a standout, jumped at me and then kicked me in the nuts render. This one is beautiful. This is the kind of quality that I want from Render Wars. Uh, so if you're thinking about sending in something, take a look at something like this. And this is your competition. That is absolutely cracking, mate. The reflections in the chess pieces. Look at that. You can see like the, the reflection of the environment there. It's like this greenhouse roof style going on up here. The reflections in the chessboard, the textures, the lights, the highlights, the glow, the background blur, the texture on the wall, mate. Across the board, that is amazing. Well done on that. You've even got a mixture of metals. You've got like matte sort of satin chrome here and then shiny chrome there. Brass on the on the queen. Is that the queen? I don't know. I don't play chess that much uh, in the background. That's a CPU killer all day long. I would hate to know how long you sat and waited for that to render. Uh, well done, uh, Steve. That one's phenomenal. He see, he must have sent in like eight or nine different variations of the same render. He must have like did it, sent it in and went, oh, I could have done this a bit better. And then he sent another one in and I ended up like a string of emails. But he got this like World War II artillery set here with like sniper bullets and a pocket watch and a German grenade on a table. Absolutely, I love that man. It's like a period render. The table's awesome, very 3D Max. I don't know if it's 3DS Max or something else, but it, it looks very 3DS Max. The background here, uh, it's a bit suspect the grass is a bit more pixelated than the the foreground objects without it being blurry i, I love that man that's just it's very call of duty i love that it's a good render uh here it is from another angle as well like the the table texture uh, you've got this bit of damage up here which is great i love that i love it when there's like non-uniform non-symmetrical elements to a to a texture it makes a massive difference in renders and then you've got this like pink glow down here i don't even know what that is but i'm all over it i'm loving that so that's a, it's a good render. Uh, and then this, this uh, I think it's a Fender Stratocaster zoomed right in. The detail on this render is incredible. Uh, I'm not so much a fan of the table, whatever it's resting on, or whether that's a wall, I don't know. It's good quality, it's just, just seems a bit random because then you've got this reflection of an outdoor scene here. Just that contrast there sort of caught my eye. But ne never mind, forgetting that, the detail on the strings is exquisite. 
and the I think these are humbuckers. I don't know. My dad will be cringing at me trying to explain what's on the guitar. He's a massive guitar fan. He's got like numerous Gibson and all kinds of Fenders and whatnot. But the detail on that is incredible, man. That there, this metal piece here in the handle. That ah, is amazing. I'd love to have seen that zoomed out a little bit more to see the, 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 maybe the neck of the guitar, if that was, uh, if that's fully rendered up in as, in as much detail as the rest of it. It's awesome, Steve, well done. Random Back to the Future hoverboard in a weird sort of country park with a statue. It's very strange, but uh, it's a good render nonetheless. And then this oil lamp. He must have sent through about 15 or 20 variations of the lamp, just tweaking it very slightly. But uh, it's come out great, mate. That's a great render. Uh, the texture quality, I have no idea how you even begin to get them that sharp. That's amazing. Uh, look at the rust on this middle bit of the lamp and the glass, the scratching on the glass. That's amazing. The only the only criticism I'd have of that is the lack of shadows because it seems like quite a bright scene and it's outdoor, but there's no obvious shadows anywhere. And the contrast between the table and the ground seems quite conflicting, but that's... Uh, minimal it's minimal apart from that mate that is awesome love it thank you very much steve they, they were cracking renders that's the kind of quality i want for render wars thank you very much steve for entering in right that'll do it for episode five of render wars thank you very much to all the entrants and thanks to everyone who's going to send in renders from this point on like i said at the start i will be a bit more brutal and savage with the uh, the selections that's the kind of quality i want to go for is what you've seen in this episode. So the email link will be in the description down below if you want to uh, if you want to enter in prizes a 3D connection at Space Mouse uh, for the winner, which I was kind of hoping I was going to get 10 episodes out of Render War Season 1. Whether we'll get to that, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, thanks very much for everyone who was entered in and I'll see you in the next episode, which will be God knows when. <laughs> it didn't take too long to make this one, so I can probably knock them out a bit quicker. Anyway, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!